Hey there, and welcome to my next video in HTML and CSS for beginners. Today we're going to be looking at HTML lists, how to use them, and how to style them. So I saved this video for a little bit later. Um, a lot of the time you'll see lists introduced and then later on how to style them. But I feel that you know understanding really how lists are working, uh, CSS can help show us a little bit of what's really going on. So uh, first we'll look at creating our lists. And lists are pretty easy to do. Uh, I'm sure you've created lists using programs like Microsoft Word before. And we have two different types of lists. We have ordered lists and unordered lists. And these are like the bullet lists and the numbered lists from Microsoft Word. So I'm going to start with an ordered list. Markup is e really easy to remember. You have an OL. And if I have an OL, I have to close my OL. So this is my ordered list, and then I'm closing off my ordered list. Now a list can't just, you know, if I save that and refresh, I, I won't see anything on my screen. I have to put some content in there. I don't put paragraphs. What I'm putting inside of my list is list items. So li list item and close list item. And let's just put item number one. I'll save that, I'll refresh, and we see one item number one. And to speed things up, let's copy and paste that a few times. And I'm going to select all three lines and push tab on my keyboard to move all of them over at the same time. And then let's put a number two, a number three, a number four. I'm going to save that and hit refresh again so we get all of them. And you can see it's numbering my items automatically. This is, I'm not, you don't see these numbers anywhere in my code. They're just automatically coming up because it's an ordered list. And by default, ordered lists are numbered lists. The other one that we can do is a unordered list. And this is a bulleted list. So if I do a UL, close UL. Let's put some comments here. That ordered list, so OL, and my UL unordered list. And let's refresh my page and there you go, you can see there's bullet points. So just like in Microsoft Word where you can push your little button to get your numbered or bullet list, same thing here using OL and UL. And if you made a mistake, you can come and change that over to UL and it will automatically change and I can change this one over to an OL. And now that becomes my ordered list. So very easy to use. So for creating lists, it's pretty simple. That's about it uh, as far as the markup goes. And that's why I didn't devote a whole video to it. It's very short. A couple of things you'll notice, uh, lists are automatically indented. So it's not perfectly lining up with my paragraph. It's indenting my list a little bit. And it's automatically giving myself some space between my lists. So the first thing I want to do here, I'm going to select my ordered list. So I'm going to put an OL for my ordered list. And I'm going to come in here. The first thing we can look at is something called list style type. And you'll notice that there's all of these popping up and these are all of my different options. So uh, some of these are more suited towards ordered lists and some are more suited towards unordered lists, but you can technically put anything you want. So if I did take a circle for my ordered list, it will no longer look like an order list. It's changing it over to a, just a different type of bullet point. Uh, so let's undo that. And I'm going to change this instead of being there. I'm going to do a upper Roman. Let's just start with that one. Save. So instead of numbers, it becomes Roman numerals. Uh, we can also do a lower Roman. And then I get lowercase. Uh, we have things like lower alpha. And instead of numbers, now it's alphabet and the upper um, okay, so you know we have a whole bunch of choices there, and on my UL, I could technically change my UL to a list style type of, uh, let's just go with my alphas again. So I could make my unordered list look like an ordered list, but um, I don't actually want to do that. Let's explore some of the other ones. We already saw a circle, which gives me instead of a bullet point, it's, oops, did I misspell circle? Circle. And instead of bullet points, it's little circles. I can also use a square. Uh, so I get square points instead of circles. Um, I have other stuff 
other options in here as well. Uh, disk is the default one. So disk is just a regular bullet point. Uh, so you can style your list just by changing the list that's on there. Oh, another one you can do actually is none. List style type none will just take away the bullets. So you still have your list, but the bullets are gone. So that's kind of interesting as well. Another really cool thing you can do, and instead of using a, a list style type, you can do a list style image. And list style images are pretty awesome. Um, so I'm in here. Uh, it's URL, so it's a little bit like a background image, or exactly like a background image, really. And in here, I have to put the path. So I've added an icon. I'm going to do img slash icon dot png, and that's not going to work. It's dot dot slash. Uh, so as a quick refresher with this dot dot, uh, what's going on is let's open up my file. Um, I'm currently inside this folder. This is I'm inside my CSS document. So I'm telling my CSS document it has to go up one level. So the dot dot means go back to my first website. And then from there, I'm going to my image folder. And then I'm finding icon.png, which is my new icon that I've added into here. Uh, so with that set up, I'm just going to save my document and hit the refresh button. And you can see it switches over to the icon that I've created. Just be really careful with this. It's going to take whatever icon you choose at full size. So let's just say for fun, uh, instead of this, I wanted my little hamster.jpg as my image. Um, it's hanging off the side here. We can't even see it in my document because it's going off the page. Uh, and it's the full size of the picture. So if you are creating your icon, you want to use a custom icon instead of a bullet point or whatever. Just make sure that you choose a, a, a very small icon or you create a very small icon. So because there's multiple parts to uh, a list, we can also style those parts. And uh, let's do this for our unordered list here. What I can do is I'm going to give my whole list a background of pink. So we can see what my list looks like. And you can see it's this big block like that. And the reason it is that size is uh, I'm selecting my whole list. So my whole list is one big item that has some items inside of it. So it's one big block. And let's just add a little bit of padding to that so I can see things a bit better. So padding 20 pixels. Uh, just to make it look a little nicer. I wouldn't normally add a background to a list like this, but uh, let's make that 50 actually. It's causing some issues on the side here. There we go. So I have my, uh, my list like that. But I also have list items. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to choose my unordered list list items. And I'm going to give them a background of red. And when I do that, it's going to highlight just the list items, but it looks like one big block. Uh, just to show you though, margin five pixels, just to create a bit of space between them. Uh, just to show you they're they're not one big block. Each list item is its own uh, big line here. So I can space out my items just by using you know, margin. Whoop, I should have made that margin bottom. 15 pixels. So I can use margin top and bottom to create the spaces on my list items the same way I could do for my paragraphs. And uh, now you also notice that I did my list items inside of my UL. So we looked a little bit at this uh, in the previous video with this type of selector. So this is my list items inside of my UL. If I only selected my list items, it would do all of them. So it would choose my list items here and my list items here, which I didn't want to do. I only wanted the ones that were inside this area. So similarly, I could take my OL and give that one a background of light blue with padding of 50 as well. And then I could come down and give my OL LIs a background of background of blue. And hit refresh. Uh, add my margin on there. Margin bottom 10 pixels. And we can't read the text. So let's just change the text color over to white. There we go. That looks a little bit better. One thing really quick you'll notice, uh, even though these are hanging off the side, so my list item really only is this text and this is sort of this extra stuff that's getting added by the browser automatically. 
the color of this will match the color of your text. And that applies to regular um, icons as well. So if or my icons, it's a picture, so we'll always keep the same color. But if instead of that, I just use the regular bullet points, the bullet points will match the color of my text. Now there's one more property that I think it's important to show you, and it depends what browser you're using. Uh, Firefox does this a little bit different than Chrome and Safari. So you, if you're using Firefox, you might not ever run into this problem, but you have to take into account all the browsers. And what I'm going to do is for my whole page, I'm just going to text align center. Uh, so let's go find my body tag. I want everything on my body text align center. And you'll notice that uh, what it's doing is it's centering the text inside of the list item, but it's leaving the bullet points and my numbers off on the side here. In Firefox, it would actually bring the things in here, and let's just change the length of my text uh, to show you really how this um, bullet point number one, or item number one, let's do list item number two, and I'll leave the other two the same, but just when, if the list items are different lengths. Um, now, because I have a background on here, it doesn't look too strange, but we'll take our back, wrong document, we'll take my background color out. So my background blue, let's take that out, and I'll even take out that light blue, we don't need that. Oh, and the color white, so we can actually see really what's going on. And you'll notice this looks really weird. I get my list items here in the middle of the page, and I get the numbering or the bullets over here on the left, and that just you, you can't really read that. People won't understand really what's going on. And this is one of those browser defaults. It's a bit weird, but on my OL, I can change the list style position. And the choices are inside, outside, or inherit, which we haven't looked at really. Uh, the default right now is outside. And again, outside is the default in Chrome and in Safari. Inside is the default in... Firefox, and I apologize, I don't know what the default in Internet Explorer and Edge is. I'm not too sure. Uh, so I'm going to switch this over to inside. I'm going to save, and you'll see it jumps to the inside like that. And just to show you what this is actually doing, I'm going to take it on this one as well. Oh, wrong one. On my UL. And uh, it jumps to the inside. So the difference in inside and outside is my all of my list items are, even if the text is very short, the list item is taking up all this space. So it's a really big list item, even if the text is small like this. So when our text is left aligned, we don't really notice because my text is lining up right on the left edge here and my numbers are right there. But what happens is uh, when I center a line, my text is jumping to the middle of that box, but my icons are staying out over here and it looks a little bit strange. So the whole point of this, uh, switching it over to inside, is it brings the icon from the outside of my list item to the inside of my list item. And the numbers or bullets or whatever icons I'm using will jump to the inside of the list. So if you are center aligning or right aligning your text, it will look much better. And that's it for list items. Uh, you probably won't use them a ton, at least in standard lists like this, but they're actually used more on websites than you might imagine. So as usual, I really hope you like this video. We're really getting close to the end of this series. We only have a little bit farther to go, but that doesn't mean you shouldn't subscribe if you haven't already subscribed and hit like if you've liked this video or if you've just liked the series in general. And please leave a comment down below. And I look forward to seeing you in the next video.